But the most scientific witness is the seismic recording station at Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory in Palisades, New York, about 20 miles north of Manhattan. They detected seismic signals that FEMA and NIST relied upon. In fact, at the plane impacts, there were seismic signals of 0.9 magnitude at the North Tower and South Tower, 0.7 magnitude. So NIST, FEMA, and LDEO surmised that these are due to the plane impacts because they happened about that time. So there's a few problems with this. The seismic signal comes in at 846 and 26 seconds, but the plane impact occurs about 14 seconds later. So we have quite a disconnect here at the North Tower. Now this is per the NTSB radar, which the 9-11 Commission relied on as the point in time at which the plane impact impacted the buildings. But NIST says, no, they didn't impact then. They, impact, they impacted 10 seconds earlier because they looked at the videos. So completely denying the more scientific NTSB radar that 9-11 Commission used. And that brought them within four seconds, at least, of their goal to try to correlate the beginning of the seismic event to the plane impact, so what do they do? They contract privately with LDEO to move the seismic data back in time three seconds, which more closely resembles their unscientific estimate of the plane impacts. Well, Something else happens in the South Tower. We have the beginning of the seismic event at 9.02 and 54 seconds, but the plane impacts, again, according to NTSB radar and the 9-11 Commission used, were at 9.03 and 11 seconds, a full 17 seconds later. How does NIST correlate this? Well, they come up with their analysis of videos which buys them about 12 seconds, but they're still five seconds short. But what do they do? Well, in the same privately contracted effort with LDEO, they encourage them to move the data back three seconds for this event as well. And indeed, Professor Kim at LD at Columbia University uh, produces another report that remains unpublished showing his reasoning for moving that back, but it remains unpublished. This is not the kind of science we're looking for. <clears throat> the witnesses also show basement explosions prior to the plane impacts. Here's Mike Pecoro. The whole thing, the whole building seemed to shake and there was a loud explosion when the when the two of them arrived at sea level, they found the machine shop gone. He says there was nothing there but rubble. We're talking about a 50-ton hydraulic press, gone. The two made their way to the parking garage, but found that it too was gone. No walls. There was rubble on the floor. You can't see anything. A steel and concrete door that weighed 300 pounds wrinkled up like a piece of aluminum foil lying on the ground. A bomb had gone off in the building. That's down in the basement. And these witnesses describe basement explosions prior to impact of the airplanes. It was a janitor, like I said, on that day, there was an explosion on the basement, and uh, this is prior to the building got hit by the plane, and then the plane hit. I think a bomb went off in the lobby first, then a plane hit the building. The bomb hit the lobby first, and a couple of seconds in the first plane hit. The bomb hit the lobby first. Well, if the... Seismic signals was not produced by the planes. What could it have been produced by? Well, applied physicist Andre Rousseau 
says the frequency of the Raleigh waves attributed by LDEO to the impacts were on the order of only one hertz. So what's wrong with that? That's very low frequency, one cycle per second. But aircraft crash impacts have much higher frequencies, well above 10 hertz and often up to around 100 hertz. These frequencies, interestingly enough, uh, not only don't match what was recorded by, by the LDEO, but they're filtered out by the LDEO by their 0. 0.6 to 5 hertz band pass filter, because they don't want all these unnecessary waves. They just want to know what earthquakes and consequently explosions, which produce small earthquakes, uh, do. Uh, so Rousseau says the range of the instruments doesn't allow for the recording of aircraft impacts, uh, seismic detection. The seismic equipment is, de is designed to detect seismic events like earthquakes and explosions around one hertz. Well, as if that's not enough, he says the actual waves generated by the crash had to have been deadened also before hitting the ground even. So this is like a flagpole. The, the plane is going to deflect it, which it did. That was felt by witnesses in the building before it ever transmits this seismic signal to the ground. Well, guess what? The collapses also are attributed uh, to the cause of the seismic signals that occurred around the time of the collapses. As you can see here, a 2.1 magnitude uh, level event was uh, recorded near the time of the collapse of the South Tower. And at the North Tower, a 2.3 magnitude event. So they suggest that this is due to the debris hitting the ground. But one thing we note is that these are fairly identical collapses, seismically speaking. Uh, and we have very different seismic levels associated with each. 2.1 in the case of the South Tower, 2.3 in the case of the North Tower. It doesn't look like much difference, but this is a logarithmic scale. It's more than a, it's 1.6 times greater energy in the North Tower. So that's unaccountable by the, the, draw, the falling of debris onto the ground. In fact, Andre Rousseau, who's written 50 published papers in progressive mechanical waves and geology, quite the expert, in 2009, he wrote this paper where explosives the source of seismic signals emitted from New York on September 11th. He says identical buildings and nearly identical collapses can't produce seismic events of extremely different energy releases on an order of magnitude. Well, we also have you know, the concrete floors, the floor trusses, the gypsum board walls, and the building contents which are not available to produce seismic components. Why? We already saw that the concrete floors, 100,000 tons of them, were pulverized in midair and spread over three square miles, slowly. The steel frame is shattered into individual wall units, just four to eight tons each, and, and the core columns as well. Outside the footprint, so they're not available all at once to produce a seismic signal. They are pelting the ground here and there. And guess what? They don't even hit the ground over this period of 15 seconds. They're hitting the seven-story concrete basement structure, further diffusing that seismic signal. And it's equally distributed over the entire super block uh, as well. So. What can be producing this seismic signal? Well, it starts at 9.59.04 for the original LTEO event. And the start of the, the tower collapse per NIST is at 9.58 and 59, five seconds before. So the debris can't have hit the ground in five seconds, right? That took 12 to 15 seconds per the videos. You could see it very clearly in time. It in fact, the, the debris starts striking the ground at 9.59 and 11. 
So we have a huge problem. Uh, we don't, but NIST does. And so what do they do? They go to LDEO and also get this set of seismic signals associated with the time of the collapse moved back three seconds as well to more closely associate it with their time of the first debris striking the ground. And this report is not published either. So what can produce the seismic signals? Well, we go to the videos, Graham McQueen's excellent work looking at New York One TV station with its tripod, tripod mounted camera shaking three seconds before the collapse of the South Tower, starting here. And you can see the shake there. And three seconds later, the collapse begins. So this is one indication of many that have come up to show, to, to prove an, an account for all these witnesses. In the North Tower, where we have even more witnesses, uh, the surface waves uh, uh, happen at uh, 10, 28, and 31 seconds. The tower starts uh, its descent uh, nine seconds earlier, and the debris is not hitting the ground in nine seconds. That can be measured quite clearly. So what does uh, NIST do? They note that the first debris strikes the pavement in about 10 seconds, which is still too early. The heaviest debris doesn't strike the pavement until about... Uh, four seconds later. Uh, so NIST has quite a problem. So once again, they go back to LDEO and contract with them privately to move this data back three seconds. And you have the link right here to uh, see that indeed NIST did do that <laughs> without uh, much explanation and without any report about why, what scientific justification there is to move this scientific, this uh, seismic data back now, on top of this, in the case of the North Tower, which was 1.6 times greater, it did produce very clearly defined P wave and S waves. And this was ignored by Professor Kim and LDEO. Why? Well, because it occurs well before the main Raleigh waves and could only have been produced by something that occurs before it. And that's what we're going to be looking at now with further work on the part of Graham McQueen uh, with camera shakes uh, six and 10 seconds prior to the start of the tower's descent, which could produce these faster P wave and S waves. Watch this camera shake just six seconds prior. This is more obvious, this one. So oh, there's the big shake, and in this case, I believe it's six seconds, the tower comes down, just uh, backing up the witnesses that we saw in video. In this case, it's 10 seconds prior to the collapse with this tripod-mounted camera from Etienne Sarre. So here is the shake see very clearly there. And 10 seconds later, we have the smooth, sudden descent. This also justifies or corroborates the witnesses, uh, dozens of which we heard just today. Now, some say, well, a 110-story building should have produced a much greater magnitude earthquake or seismic event than the four-story Seattle Kingdom, and this is faulty logic because the Seattle Kingdom has a 25,000-ton roof which impacts the ground all at once. We're not comparing apples to oranges here at all. So we have others who have summarized this evidence quite well, the work of the Consensus 9-11 panel David Ray Griffin and Elizabeth Woodward. We have um, point TT7, why did the Twin Towers collapse? Recommend that uh, as a great summary 
of the work that uh, the information we've just uh, provided to you. Uh, as well, uh, Andre Rousseau's 2012 work, where explosives the source of the seismic signals, and Graham McQueen's 2009 exhaustive study of uh, other witnesses like cameras, very scientific witnesses, and, and Gordon Ross in 2006, seismic proof, 9-11, not what we were told.